not here to produce masterpieces, don't expect to do masterpieces. You cannot do a good drawing or a bad drawing. Learning about expressive drawing is really going back to the spontaneity that you had as a child. Children never ask, how should I start? Children never ask, is this painting finished? Except now you've got a lifetime's worth of history to bring to the table. But that history and that baggage, the worrier, the thinker, the analyzer, the doubter, the part of you that has to validate everything you do intellectually, those things get in the way. And if you can get those out of the way, then you get expressive drawing. I want you to consider each one of these rectangles to be an arena, a stage, or a world. The first exercise I have people do, I tell them to put a circle, a square, and a triangle. Don't think, don't worry, don't plan. Move to surface number two and make a different variation of this. Put in one circle, one square, one triangle. No rules. The last thing I would encourage you to do is to do it fairly quickly and not worry. Just let her rip. This time, I want you to do it as quickly as you possibly can. Give it a shot. That's it, okay, beautiful. One of the benefits of working quickly is that... You don't think. You don't think. Yeah. Right. I feel like I'm a caveman when I'm painting this <laughs> painting. <laughs>second exercise is automatic drawing and anybody can do this. Put your foot in the toe notch, walk up to the surface, lean in and make a motion and then get the heck out of there. Take it in for no more than about 10 seconds. As soon as you get an urge to do anything, it doesn't matter what it is, go right up and do it one more time and keep this dance. It's a dance coming back and forth between you and the surface. If you hit a point where you absolutely love what you see or feel, stop. I didn't start until I was uh, 43. And, uh, you know, I was the person that would go to the art shows and just look at art and be amazed at what these artists could do, but I couldn't do it. It, it wasn't, you know, coming out of me uh, until I met Steve and started doing this expressive drawing and painting. The third exercise I call assert and obliterate. First, I'm gonna say draw, and I want you to pick up a drawing tool and go up to the surface and draw. And again, just get it marked up because much of it will be gone before you know it. So just fill up the space with energy. I say switch, they put the drawing tools down and begin to cover up. Look for things that uh, are working especially well for you and keep them, embrace them, find other elements that aren't working so well for you and use the white paint to de-emphasize them, veil them, uh, push them back into the space, embed them, okay, and switch. Put down the white paint, go back to the drawing tool. Uh, and switch once more. Beautiful. I started doing my thing, and I'm always just, you know, I'm a little controlled, okay? And I started doing all this, and then I'm going to go, oh, but it's okay. I can just be forgiven. I can just be forgiven for whatever mark I put over there. And just over and over, it's like, oh, it's okay. I can just go, wow, wow, go away, go away, get out of here. To do this is to break the rules, but I, I feel very focused on maybe being unfocused. It's energizing, uh, it is stress relieving, it allows me to know that I probably have expanded uh, myself a great deal. Expressive drawing is the way to leave the laundry behind, you know, the telephone, the computer, whatever is coming up, whatever's gone before, 
It's the tapping into the, uh, that pure place. You know, you don't really know what's missing in your life until you have it. It's healed so many things in my life that I've uh, gone through, and, and it allows you to work through so many things. And if I couldn't do it, I don't know what I would do. It's something that you have to do once you start.